So we're continuing on with this repair of this Keithy 150B. In the last section of the video I was looking at trying to figure out if it even worked and it didn't. So we put an input voltage in, there's nothing showing up on the meter. It did seem to have power, the power supply rails look fine, we already established that the rails look okay. The rails look fine, voltage looks okay, that sort of stuff. So now we need to look at why is there no signal getting from this point here to this point over here. A fair bit going on, it's a fairly simple instrument in a way. There's still a lot going on here which could potentially cause problems. We've got all these switches, it could be a bad switch, it's possible, it wouldn't be the first time. Could be his chopper's not working right, maybe the contacts and chopper worn out and so it's caused it to not have a signal come through. It's certainly possible. There's different methodologies about how you troubleshoot things. You can start at the beginning and work your way through the from the very beginning, work through each stage, right through the switches and just trace it all the way through until you lose the signal. Nothing wrong with doing that technique, absolutely not. You can also start at the end and work backwards from the end and work your way through this way and see when the signal appears. Also a very valid way of doing it. My technique, which is one I figured out many years ago when I was working on CB radios, is to actually start in the middle because that divides half the circuit. If you start in the middle and you've got a signal, you've eliminated this half. You saved yourself half the work. If you don't have a signal, then you know it's in this half. So if it is here, then you could divide it in half again. You could go, right, we want to go three quarters of the way through the circuit, so about here somewhere. Right, we'll look at that bit. And each time you divide it in half. And it just means you can get to the trouble area, usually a lot quicker. But sometimes you do want to go through stage by stage to validate that each stage is working correctly and working within its specs or, or whatever you need to do. Sometimes that's necessary and you can't really avoid it. Even though you want to do a quick troubleshoot technique, you want to go, okay, I want to go halfway to diagnose the problem area much quicker. Sometimes you actually do want to uh, take your time and go through it stage by stage. Depends on what kind of equipment you're actually working on, how complex it is, how many side circuits there are which feed into it, branching off and that sort of stuff. Sometimes you want to check out those branches, make sure they're working correctly. So it depends on how complex the circuit is really. In this case, I'm starting in the middle. I'm going to start here, which is on the output of Q105, which is part of an amplifier stage. So this actually goes off board and goes to the range switch over here for start. And also links into the other amplifiers over here. So it's a nice intermediate point. It's part of the amplifier circuitry. I've got no idea what signal we're actually going to get there. I've got, I've got no idea. I just don't know. It could be nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter what we're going to find. Because if we hook up to this point here, we're actually going to hook up to the leave this resistor R120, because I've actually got a probe hooked up to it now. You can't see off screen yet. I'm going to measure that point in my scope, see what we get. Then I'm going to inject a voltage using the awesome PDVS2 Mini by Ian Johnson. Not affiliated. And we're going to inject the voltage to that because we can control it and do very low levels, which is quite important. I mean, it's very controlled, so it's very precise levels that we can control by here. It's much easier than using a power supply. A normal power supply just wouldn't do this very accurately. We can then see if this signal at this point changes. If it changes, and it changes what appears to be in a linear fashion relative to the input signal we're doing, then we know that this half is okay. If there's nothing there, or it never changes in any way whatsoever, then we know the problem is before that point, and then we look further back. Simple? I hope so. So here's the scope probe set up, it's sitting down here on the board, and it's going down to the resistor. You can probably just see it hooked on there. It's down there. Right, on the left leg of that resistor in the bottom there. They go up to the negative side of C105, which is actually this big capacitor right here. So that's the output of the amplifier section, that first stage anyway. So that's what we're going to be testing. Click subscribe right now. Yeah, I know. Okay, AC power on, chopper's starting. So we do see some meter activity, right? So we do have some kind of life somewhere in the circuitry. You can probably hear the chopper's running. Scarlet's kind of just drifting around a bit. It seems like it's basically floating. Or something's heating up and shorting out or something. Who knows? But you can see we've changed 50 millivolts, nothing happening which is what we had before. So let's put this back to zero volts and I'll go and look at the scope. So there you go, there's my scope read out. This is an interesting waveform. Now I did remember reading in the manual, I did obviously briefly look at a few things in it when I was sort of scanning it and things like that, that it's supposed to be running at 94 hertz on the chopper. So if I bring the trigger up to this point here because it's jumping around slightly, we're getting 50 hertz right there which is interesting 
if I bring it down to, there you go, I was getting yeah, about 100 hertz there. So to me that sounds like it's running at AC mains frequency rather than 94 hertz, which is slightly interesting. That may or may not be relevant. So I've changed it now from open to 100k, just to be sure, because someone in the chat, David, mentioned that he didn't think I'd measure anything in open. He might be right, I'm not sure. So I'll put it to 100k to be sure we're definitely getting a signal. Let's put in 50 millivolts. Nothing changes. Okay. Let's do 100 millivolts. Nothing changes. Let's do 1 volt, which is the absolute maximum scale on this thing. Nothing changes. So I think we can be pretty sure that the input is not getting to that point. So the problem is before that section of the circuit. So this input comes through, it goes into this transformer here. So what it does, it switches here. Um, this, this is the chopper, so it switches between one side and the other, which effectively creates an AC waveform onto this input, this transformer. This transformer then ups the voltage going into this FET here. Right, then, it, then it goes to the amplification chain. So we've already tested it here, just there, that point there, we know it's not there. So I need to come back a bit. Now I'm actually going to come right back to this transformer here, or somewhere in this area, because I need to make sure that it's getting to this point next, okay? Because I think the fault is likely to be the chopper, but it could also be a transformer, you never know. But if we test it here, obviously it's going to be a much lower signal level because there's no amplification chain, but we should still see something we are using the oscilloscope after all. If I hook up to this point here and test that point, we should be able to see something coming out of that transformer. Obviously it's going to be AC because it's from a transformer, but if I adjust the voltage level on the input at that point, well from that point, I measure it there, we should hopefully see something, if we're lucky. So there's the FET, which I was looking at, Q105, sorry, 115, Q115. And I was trying to figure out why it's got this other trace comes back to the input as well. Obviously what's happening is when you're in these lower ranges over here, this is the range switch here. So this is like 0.3 microvolts, up to 300 microvolts that runs through this system here that links it all to this divider and all these other switches but after that this point here that comes back down this comes down to the higher level so it's one millivolt upwards is after the FET so I think it's adjusting the voltages on that FET to change again depending on what range it's doing I think we're actually quite safe to measure here on R103 the output of that FET because that's a nice easy point to get to because it's right here. The resistor's right here, and you probably can't see it. That's an easy thing to clip onto, so I need to get onto that. We'll test at that point right there, and we'll see what we get. So I was determining which side of the resistor to measure on, so I've gone to the left side, and over here, the right leg of that FET connects to the left side of that resistor, so I believe that is the side I need to probe on. So I'm going to repeat the same test. I've got this on the maximum voltage here, so one volt input maximum. Uh, let's make sure this is actually in the on position, it is, and that is in the open position, so it's not loaded down by 100k. I shall turn the power on, and I'll look at the scope and see what we get, and then I'll change the camera view. But I just want you to see this test set up again, obviously with the PDV is too many injecting a voltage here with the probe hooked up to that resistor. Okay, so I've got it powering up. It's interesting way you see the waveforms changing as it's going. As it warms up, it gets different, it's interesting gradually grows. Why does that change as it warms up? That's interesting. This doesn't have a valve in it. And if it had a valve, I can understand it taking a while to warm up. But it should be pretty much instant apart from the chopper startup. Hmm. It does kind of lean towards capacitors. Oh, hold on. It's always a capacitor. Yeah. Okay, let's shove in 100 millivolts on a 1 volt range. That did change. It jumped. Got back to zero volts. It jumped again. So that part looks like it's doing something. It's the one volt because that's the maximum input this particular range can take. And that changed and it's looking a bit jittery and noisy. Well, not jittery, but noisy at least. That's interesting. Let's go higher oh, range light. Seems it's safe to. Back to zero volts. 
Yeah, that's interesting. It's definitely doing something, but is it right? Peak to peak 9.4 with one volt in, and a peak to peak of 10.4 with zero volts in. Aha. So one volt is being deducted from that waveform. So if I put in one volt, it reduces it by one volt. So up to that point, it appears to be working. Apart from the slightly checkered waveform, which is interesting. It could be contact bounce on a chopper. Getting somewhere. So this is the card you want to look at. This is Q103 right here. The resistor we want to look for is R110, which is that one. There. That's R110 there. So there's a junction between those two, I think. Somewhere. You can actually see to the light there. You can follow the trace around, goes around to the centre pin of that transistor. So that is where we need to connect to, is that one there, the top leg of that resistor. And probe there and see what we get. So let's power this up at this point. This is, say, connect up to R110 at the junction of Q103. And we'll see what we get. Everything else is in the same condition. One volt setting on the front panel. Open circuit. Nothing's changed there. So you get a rising voltage. Why is that rising so slowly? That just... Yeah, it just seems to me like it's got something going on there which isn't right. Anyway, it's jetting zero volts right now, so it's to 100 millivolts. It did step as I made that change. Okay, back to zero volts, it did step again. Let's do one volt, nothing appeared to change. And back again, nothing really appeared to change. Let's just limit the bandwidth a bit, actually, let's go down to 20 megahertz, get some of the noise out of it. And um, let's do AC coupling. See if we can look at this a bit more closely. That's zero volt going in right now. One volt going in. No change. 100 millivolts. No change. Because we've got this noise in there too, eh? Um, let's get the trigger set up, right? That might help. Yeah, so I'll do one millivolt. So 100 millivolts. No apparent change. One volt. No apparent change. So at that point, we're not getting any information at all. So R109 is the next one we'll look at, which is here. So that resistor, which is horizontal. Is that focused? Yeah, ish. There. I just need to check for that, which connection it actually goes to. Um, R109 needs to go to, I've lost myself now, Q102, which is where I want to look at, which is the transistor. Unfortunately, the actual layout's in the, in the manual upside down. So it's like this way up. I think I'll just turn it around, it'll be easier. All right, Q102 is up here. And that's the resistor I want to check. So I need to find a junction between these two, which I think is this leg here. Well, that goes to that one and that one. That's the output side. Let me check. I'll show you a diagram in a second, actually. So there's Q102. We're checking over here before on Q103. On that output from R110. There we go. That's where I was testing before. And now I want to check on the input of Q103, basically, here R109. So I think that is the correct junction there that I was looking at just then. That point there is where I need to hook up to. We'll test there as well. So now hook up to R109. Let's power this up again. You can see that ramp up because I've got the slow time base on there now. Maybe roll mode would have been an idea. <laughs> That noise coming down, you can actually see it stabilises, can't you? Because you have those other lower peaks which have now just faded off. It's very interesting, okay. So that's a nice waveform there. Okay, well, that's 11 volts peak to peak.
Right. 6.5 IMS. Minus 333. Max is 11.2. Alright, let's put some voltage into this thing. Let's do 100 millivolts. Something did change, I just did away from change. There's a little peak here which appeared. See that peak pop up? Okay, let's do one volt. And that's changed it around, so it's basically swapped it over the other way. So it's doing something. But I'm not sure that's right. Can you see what it's doing? So I might just do a single capture on this, eh? Let's get the trigger in the right place, that might be helpful, eh? There you go, that's even better. Right. One volt, there we go. See what it's doing? Hmm, curious. So I think that's basically trying to change the duty cycle. But I'm not sure this bit's right, or this bit here is right. But we are seeing a change, but we weren't seeing a change after this point. So I'm thinking we've got a problem potentially around that Q103. But that slow ramp up everything and that stabilisation of it all is curious. I'm not sure that bit's right because I mean, yes, the chopper has got time to start up. It's got, you know, it's a mechanical chopper, but you can hear it, and it doesn't take that long to actually get up to speed. But after that point, even it's, it sounds like it's stabilised, you're still getting that changing in voltages. I'm actually leaning towards recapping this thing because I think it could be a problem with caps not uh, handling things properly. I mean, this could be a sign of a bad cap. It could be something which isn't being smooth like it should be, and letting noise through. I reckon we start recapping this thing and just go from there. Right, let's test Q103. I've hooked up to it. Let's see what happens. It's taken a while. No component detected. <laughs> okay. Let's just give it a bit of a scrape with the probe. Maybe it's just a bit of oxidisation on the leads or something. Hmm. Do you think the transistor's dead? As soon as it can't find it, it's looking quite like that part's no good. Would make sense. So seeing as that tester couldn't actually get a conjunction, I did test a few other transistors, all the same type, and they all gave similar results. There's only one which actually got a result from, and I thought it was a diode junction, a dual diode. So it seems this particular transistor it doesn't like. So let's just do some testing with diode test mode. 0.7. Point seven. Okay, and these are all the same transistors. Can I figure out which way around now? That one there. Point seven. I'll do reverse chest in a minute. Come on. Point seven. Point six seven. Point six nine. Slight imbalance. Seven. Point seven. Okay, let's do reverse test. All of these. Nothing. 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 Um, well, diode test looks fine. I was thinking I found a bad transistor then, but looks like I was wrong. Not that. Well, I'll check some capacitors, see what we can get. Point eight ohms, 127 microfarad. Well, that's supposed to be a... I've forgotten. 125, so it's actually really close. That's quite surprisingly good. Got some tantalums, let's quickly check these. 2.4 ohms, it's tantalum, they usually do measure higher. And 21 microfarad, yeah, it's probably a 22 then. What's this one here? 0.9 ohms, 26 microfarad. Significantly better, actually, surprising. 1.9 ohms, 10 microfarad, and 5.3 at 10. That one seems interesting. Yes, that did seem a bit excessive. 5.3. So 
Let's measure it again. Could just be bad connections. There you go, one. That's better. I'll just come back and we measure this one. Oh, that's not it. Do it again. Yeah, 1.7. Yeah, I mean, they're alright. It's not, it's not a short attempt to them anyway. So it rules those out. And that capacitor measured fine. So that's surprising. Let's measure these three. Once I figure out where they are. Point four ohms, 170. What's that rated for? I think it's 100. Yes, yeah, 100. That's a, a significant difference. 70% up. I think that might be a bit excessive. And we've got these other two here, which are 10 microfarads. Yeah. Can't measure that one. And seventeen, also seventy percent up. So I've got around a dozen testing on various parts. These transistors are germanium to PMPs, they test okay. This one I can't get a measurement on. None of these I can get measurements on, apart from I think that one there it came back as a dual diode. Measure caps, this one I couldn't measure. This one was hundred and 70% or 70% up from what it should be and so was this one but then a measuring in circuits so that could be throwing those out. Hal eyes because they've got the red dots on the top and with those two and these two up here they measured okay at least on the ten transistor test. I haven't checked this one. I should check this one as well. I missed that one. Check this capacitor here that seemed to be okay. Value was almost bang on. It's only like two microfarad out from what it's listed as so that's good. So the other thing to consider is resistors right. These old carbon composite resistors they do drift off value, especially if they've been stressed. If they have a bit of power put through them, if they're doing a bit of hard work, they will change value by quite a lot. So I need to probably check these resistors and make sure they haven't all drifted off value too badly to make sure it kind of makes sense. Because it could just be a resistor is gone and it's not providing great voltages to a particular transistor or something like that. It's entirely possible. So remember earlier in the video I commented about this solder sitting up here. It's been included with the unit. Just stuck up here like this. This isn't silver solder. I thought it was silver solder before. It's cadmium solder. It's extremely low thermal conductivity. Thermal EMF. It's cadmium solder. Special stuff. I've never even seen it before. That's why that's in there. Now, should I be using it on this board? Maybe. I'm going to use my silver solder though. It's just too good to touch it. So I thought I'd check these capacitors. I already checked this one and yet yeah, out of circuit still measuring 70% high. It's hard look good though, but being a really high value, it means it's probably drying up. And it does actually feel quite light. This one here, which is supposed to be a 10 microfarad, as you can see I'm measuring about 600 picofarad and 14 mega ohms EC, uh, ESR. So that cap is completely dead. Let's check the other one. Same 10 microfarad. There you go, this is the other one. 70% up and two ohms is a bit on the high side so yeah both of those small caps are dead so this one's measuring badly but um, I'll show you this one again so I stuffed up and I forgot to show you the actual screen there you go there's this one now you get your 40 picofarad no uh, uh, it's probably just lead resistance lead, lead capacitance and the fact that the probes are close together this cap's completely open and as I measured in circuit I can measure it in circuit that explains why so this capacitor it's a zoom of this. It's always a capacitor. Right, so I've replaced those capacitors and as we saw they're bad. Let's power this up. I've hooked up the probe back to R110, which is the output of Q103 again, which we saw last time was basically dead. We've still got this really slow slope upwards. You see that? That voltage climb is still really slow. I think there's more going on yet. We, we Even if I have found those problems, I don't think that's all the problems we've got. So let's do 100 millivolts on the 1000 millivolt range. No obvious change. But, ooh, interesting. Okay, let's go AC coupling. Here my stomach grumbling. I think it's time for lunch. Could use a 
tuna and cucumber sandwich actually. So it's AC coupled, 500, uh, sorry, 200 millivolts of the vision. This increases by 100 millivolts. Nothing obvious. 200. Can't see anything there, eh? That's interesting. And I'll show you why this is interesting. So here's the meter sitting at zero roughly right now. That's okay, we're injecting zero volts on the 1000 millivolt scale as you were before when doing that other testing on a scope. The scope is still hooked up even. Do 100 millivolts. Uh, the meter moved to 100 millivolt position. Do 200. Uh, it's moved again to 200. Uh, 400. Uh, I think it's working now. Yeah. It's always a capacitor. So I'm just working my way through the ranges, just seeing how they're all working. This is why I've got the PDBs too many, because this is really good for doing this sort of thing. Even just me t touching things is affecting these readings and being near to them. And the casings being off isn't helping, so this should be one. It is. Two. Three. Full scale. That's the 300 microvolt range. Right, do the 100 microvolt range. That should be full scale, basically. When I get the zeroing right and get things settled down and get it getting touched just right. There you go. It's fine. It's working all right. So 30 microvolts. See how sensitive this is now. I think I'll take the scope off because that could be affecting things. Oh yes, look at that. <laughs> right, let's do one. There it is. Two. Oh, zero is playing around. Three. There we go. Yep. So that's 30 microvolts. Let's do 10 microvolts. It's just like, even just being near it is affecting it. Come on. Ten. Going off scale, but it could be zeroing again. It is, so it's gone high. Sit down there instead. Got too much noise here. But there you go. Yep, that's working down to there. Excellent. It bloody works. And this is can go down a lot more. Yeah, it's got three more ranges below this one. So I've Measure all these capacitors here. I can't remember if I recorded it or not, probably didn't. These ones are measuring a bit high, about 40% or so high. Not too bad, but the borderline. And the fact that the other one was measuring 70% high means these are probably on the way out, they're probably drying out. These big metal ones here, these are all measuring very high between about 25% to about 50%. So these are probably all on the way out as well. So I'm just going to place all these caps and then that's that board done. I don't think I have to worry about this one. That's a different type, that should be fine, as will that one there be right as well. So, this does electrolytics and move on. So, I just went to replace the capacitor here, pulled the thing out and checked it out, and it doesn't quite match up with what's in the, the actual service manual, which is interesting. The part that's in here is a 125 microfarad 15 volt part, and it's also non polarized. It's got NP on it, right, which means it's a non polarized capacitor. And both legs are marked as positive, so that confirms that as well. So non-polarized caps aren't, they're not unheard of, but you know, they're a little bit more unusual. Don't tend to get them that often. But something to watch out for when you are working on gear, you don't accidentally replace a non-polarized cap with a polarized one. So I pulled it out, and it doesn't match what's in the manual, which says a 100 microfarad 6 volt. and doesn't mention anything about polarization, and the diagram doesn't even show it as being a polarized cap. But it's probably just because of the markings I had available to them when I did the drawing. The diagrams maybe, I don't know. But, um, so I pulled it out. I tested it out circuit, it measures okay, so I'll just put it back in again because I've really got no choice right now. Would have been nice to change it, but as it is, it's going to have to stay. I mean, it measured okay, so I'm not overly concerned by it, so it's probably fine, but also it could not be. It's possible it's not fine, but 
I like to replace all the caps. Now there's one more capacitor to replace, just one, which is this one here. And that's the last one to do, I think. And that's a spiral cap. So what I'm going to do is just measure that one because it means taking this board out otherwise. Which might be okay, but it's got this wide loom. It's all wrapped. So it's wrapped loom. It's like, you know, I don't really want to disturb all that. Just to get this board lifted up, especially over here. We've got this interesting connection set up down there. I don't know what's going on there. There's some, something going on there and there. I don't want to disturb all that either. And also this capacitor. This is the input board. So the input comes into here. So this is likely to be very sensitive, which is probably why it has that special solder sitting up here. So that solder is probably meant for that board. Or maybe even these switches, it's possible. I'm just going to measure it. If it measures okay, I'm going to leave it alone. So that's what that cap measured. 131 at 0.64 ohms. What is it? What's it supposed to be? I can't just see. I need to look it up and find out what that part's supposed to be. So that's supposed to be 125, so it's measuring only slightly high, so that's fine. ESR is okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. It's not worth disturbing all the circuitry here to change that cap, which is probably fine anyway. Not worth it. I, I would like to change it, but it's not worth disturbing it for that. All right, let's power this up again and see what we get. So I've replaced all the caps now, apart from two. One on the input board and one on the main board, as I discussed just now. So that's two caps which haven't been done. But they're both tested okay, so I'm not overly worried about them. And one of them is the Sprague, which is high quality. Those caps are usually really good, even now, even you know, 60 years later, or nearly 60 years later, usually still good. So let's turn the power on and see what happens. So it's still getting that slow ramp up. But that's looking okay. Let's turn some power into it. Yeah, let's put in 100 millivolts. The meter is still working, nothing showing on there. Do one volt, meters fully deflecting like it should. Nothing showing on there. You can kind of see it stepping though, can't you? So there is something happening here. It is detecting the voltage change there, and the meter is working. So that's good. All right, let's have a look at this. So this is on the one volt range. D one volt, and it is basically there. I think I measured with the scope, and that may be upsetting things. Just actually let's unhook the scope again. I don't need that on there now. It's about a zero. There you go, zero. It's sitting slightly low there. I probably should put the covers back on it. It's upsetting it. Anyway, so that is basically working there. I might have to look at that in more detail just to make sure. 300. It's basically working there. Now, let it fill off. It's sitting below. So I may have some other problems still with this yet. I'm not confident about resistors. I mean, I measured a bunch of resistors and they seem fine, which is really surprising. I'm not sure about the stability aspect of this. Maybe it'll change once I've got the covers on, because you know, this is a sensitive instrument and having the covers off it probably aren't helping. Let's do so 10 millivolts. Go, try and get it exactly zero. Try to. So it's looking through the camera lens, it's a bit hard to tell. And it may not be perfectly in line either. 2 millivolt range, let's do 10 millivolts. It's speeding a touch down. So I may need to give us a bit of a calibration, a bit of a tweak. Replacing those caps may have affected things slightly. That's entirely possible. So maybe I should just go through the calibration procedure. I'm not going to do it now, I'll do it later on. It could take me a while. I don't know, but it looks like it is at least working now, so that's the main thing. It does function. See 10, there it is. 30, there it is. I bet if I drop down again, it's, it's sitting above it. It is, just very slightly. Yeah, it's working alright. Happy with that. So I think at this stage I can call that a successful repair. I, so I'm going to go through the calibration procedure. That may throw up some more faults. If it does, I'll record some more video later on and add it on to the end. If there's no more video after this, then it's working fine. I'm happy with that. This is a nice little piece of gear. I'm going to chuck this out in my other lab. And it's the sort of thing you don't use very often, but it will come up from time to time. It'd be nice to have and actually be able to pull it out and use it. Um, this is why I get these bits of gear. They may be old, but they have certain functions like really low input levels 
and great sensitivity if modern gear has trouble with this sometimes so yeah and the noise issues and the drifting will be purely because I've got no cases I expect it could be leaky resistors you know these resistors could be a bit noisy and that could be affecting the reader it's possible I haven't ruled out yet not completely I've been mean, like I said the ones I tested looked okay could still be dodgy resistors it's entirely possible and so check out the links down below for other videos subscribe link over there Patreon's putting over there helping me to buy things like this to work on and repair and do videos about Peace out.